Let's jump into some tight ends. We're going to start off with TJ Hawkinson. DLF, June startup ADP, was tight end for 26 years old. 10.1 half PPR points per game in 2022. Rose a little bit to 10.9 half PPR points per game after being traded to the Vikings. But the big difference for him there with the Vikings was the, the volume that he got there with his targets increasing from 6.1 to 9.4 targets per game. They did draft Jordan Addison this year, which I think was a big add. Might affect his target volume a little bit. But they've also made moves, I think, that say they're going to pass even more this year than they did last year. Even really lean into it a little bit more with the release of Dalvin Cook, making Alexander Madison their running back. So, Jax, are we interested in TJ Hawkinson at this price? Yeah, especially because I think he's, you know, he's younger than people think. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, tight ends are a little bit older. You know, I love Waller. He's 30. Kittle's approaching 30. Um, you know, obviously Kelsey is very old and very awesome, but still older. Uh, Andrews is obviously, you know, in a tier above all these guys. So it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, when you start to break it down, I mean, I think he's kind of comfortably in, in tight end four land, although you can make an argument for the other guys behind him that you're going to talk about here in a minute. You know, isn't the thing that kind of worried you a little bit about his time in Minnesota is certainly not the target rate, but he was only like 8.7. Well, not like he was 8.7 yards per reception. Um, you know, only six yards per target, just really kind of mediocre. I think he's a better player than that, but you'd like to see a little bit, maybe Addison opens that up. Maybe it was just a little bit too concentrated, but yeah, you'd like to see a few more big plays from him. Um, that's really, I think he's got a bit of a cap ceiling. We might hear that term again, uh, but you know, I do like the, the targets. I think he can easily pencil in for, you know, a hundred plus targets this year, which that's everything we're looking for in a tight end. So, yeah, given the the dearth of talent behind him, uh, TJ Hawkinson is fine. I think I did just draft him in a in a startup, um, you know, at that value. So I, I'm in. What about you guys? Yeah, I like the point about his actual efficiency once he got there. Because, I mean, he was more or less just this, like, safety valve for Kirk Cousins yeah. when Justin Jefferson wasn't getting open in his time there. Now, it still got us enough fancy points that we were happy. Uh, but for me, you know, Looking at his dynasty value, I think it's kind of he's been like consensus tight end four, but I've also seen the actual trade value and startup value kind of be all over the place for him. And that's where it really comes down to me is what is it actually costing for that tight end four? Because I've seen right. some pretty high startup picks for him that I can't get into. Skylar, what do you think? Yeah, and the reason you get that discrepancy is with TJ Hawkinson, he kind of just sits in a tier by himself at four. I know for a long time, we had George Kittle right next to him, but with seeing George Kittle at, what, 29.8 years old, really coming that close to 30 with his injury history, managers are starting to view those two players pretty different. And what happens in a lot of your leagues, the managers who have Kyle Pitts invested a lot, and they don't want to be moving off the player at this point in time. Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey win leagues. They don't want to move them. So the managers who want to make a difference in their lineup, they look, the first name down is TJ Hawkinson, kind of by himself. And that's where you get a really unique league-to-league -league market here with TJ Hawkinson because you have some managers who are willing to overpay to try to see what they see as that missing piece. And then you have other startups where he slides down and you see him, he goes around the same range as players like Najee Harris, Brandon Ayuk, uh, Jerry Judy, Christian Watson. And I would prefer TJ Hawkinson to probably all of those players on my dynasty team. But then I see other trades where he's still, he might go for two first. He might, you know, managers might move rather aggressively. And I see a lot of trades for TJ Hawkinson where I'm just not a fan. Personally, you talked about the cap ceiling. People mention it all the time because it's true. I mean, with with his time in Minnesota where people loved it, they're like, look at the target share. Look at what we got from this player during his time with Minnesota. You extrapolate that over a season, and we're talking 850 yards. I mean, I know, right, target share, 19%, that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, TJ Hawkinson has to do a lot more to get to the point where he's going to return that high-end value. And that's where I just won't overinvest in a player like that. I think it's inherently capped. I think Zach Ertz, like five years ago, was a good example of a player where if you think back, you're like, yeah, Zach Ertz, he had plenty of 1,000-yard seasons. He was a very cable tight end. He was one of the best three for a while. He had one 1,000-yard season. TJ Hawkinson's yet to have a 1,000-yard season. 
when it's all said and done, he could have one in his career a lot like Ertz. And does that mean T.J. Hawkins is a bad player? No. Does that mean he's not a top, top tight end? No, because I think he's going to be tops five or six, probably for the foreseeable future. He's only 26 years old. I think he gives you three more seasons, if not, you know, maybe four or five at that type of level. It's just what you're investing. I had this conversation with somebody uh, in our Discord. You can find it at the top of the description uh, just yesterday where they felt that they were asking on the clock in a tight end premium was like one and a half TJ Hawkinson versus Kyle Pitts. And my opinion was that these two players should not be in the same conversation if they're both on the board. And another manager came in and said, well, I actually view them quite similar because of the short-term situation for Kyle Pitts. And for me, the big difference between Hawkinson and a player like Kyle Pitts is just, it is just that ceiling. Like TJ Hawkinson is not going to give you 1,200 yards like a player like Kyle Pitts can. I mean, even if he doesn't recognize that, I'm taking that risk every single day of the week. Uh, you know, a couple of players we'll get into later, but a player like Pat Fryermuth, I think is going to be a lot closer in production to what you get from TJ Hawkinson. And he comes at a fraction of the cost, almost almost like 25% cheaper than a player like TJ Hawkinson. So rather than viewing Pitts versus Hawkinson as close, if you are in that situation, I'd rather move down from Hawkinson to Pat Fryermuth, pick up a second and, and be on my way. So... That's kind of where I sit on TJ Hawkinson. He's very much appropriate at tight end four, but it just comes down to your league because he's not the type of player I'm overpaying for because I don't think he's that difference maker that other managers might feel he is. Jex, if if you're a tight end or a TJ Hawkinson manager, uh, what are, what is the action you're doing with them? Are you are you shopping him? Are you here, here, here's the interesting thing in a in a non tight end premium, he's he's a little bit less valuable in a tight end premium. They premium what? Not yards, not touchdowns, right. but receptions. So he's more likely to have a pretty good target share. So I think he's a little bit more valuable in a like a super tight end premium, uh, where he's a converter. Uh, I play in a certain league that's basically they there's a premium for first down as well. So you know he's that type of player. I think you know Pitts a little bit more valuable in that type of setup, of course. Um, Goddard again, we're going to get to, but you know, um, yeah, I think that's about right. Uh, what, what was your question? I was answering his. Uh, yeah, just I forgot what your question was, Wyatt. I'm I'm an idiot. It's okay. You know, just if you're if you're a manager of TJ Hawkinson, what is the you know yeah. the, the desired path if if you have him? Are you trying to sell tear down like Skyler said? Are you just holding? I, I think so, sure. I mean, there I wouldn't value him in such a way that I wouldn't be willing to 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 trade down. I mean, I'm all I mean, I guess you guys say it, right? No player's untouchable. Every every player should be looked at as an opportunity to move up or down. Yeah. Um, you know, can I can I get to Andrews with that's, Hawkinson? That's what I'm curious about. How much does it take? I'd love to try that. You know, I mean, especially if someone is saying, well, they're only a couple spots away and he's older and yada, yada. Yeah, I, I used Kyle Pitts to get to Andrews this offseason, um, you know, in a, in a trade. So, I mean, I'm always willing to consider, you know, what the options are with every player. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to get the conversation going in your league. That's sometimes the hardest thing, uh, but I'm always willing to have it. Yeah, I dig it. 